My, by far my favorite method to do on a deadhead is to macerate them. Soaking them in that, in that water for so long draws the blood out, um, it helps degrease them, and it, it's just, it's the best way to do it. Hey, what's up guys? Tobin here, 5M Family Homestead Channel. Today I'm gonna to show y'all how I do a European mount on a deadhead. And when I say deadhead, what I mean is that this is a deer that was found dead in the woods by my customer. When this happens, when, when, the, when the head sits there for an uh, extended amount of time, even for a few days it can happen, uh, but especially for an extended amount of time, the hide starts to dry out and it turns into very, very hard leatherish, concreteish type material and it's very hard to get off. The, the blood soaking into the skull can cause it to stain and it's, it's sometimes harder to get white. It's gonna be a, um, you know, you'll see me now and then you'll see me two or three weeks from now and then again two or three weeks because it's gonna be a, a slow process. So what we're gonna do first is take the head out. It still has the, the bottom jaw attached to it and we're gonna take it out of the bag that, that came in and we're gonna soak it in a bucket of water. No chemicals, nothing in that water, no soap, no nothing, just plain water. What that's gonna do is gonna rehydrate all that hide, it's gonna stink. We'll soak it in there for a while. Um, there's really no timeline, at least a few days. And then the gross part comes. Pull it out of the bucket and then we're gonna skin it and get as much of the hide off as we can. All right guys, got my, that blue bucket over there's got my water in it. You can see the head right there behind me leaning up against the wall. Now, as y'all can see, that's a pretty nice deer. Like I said, the guy suspects that somebody shot it and uh, didn't recover it and it made it over to his property. Either way, if that is the case, whoever shot that deer and couldn't find it, his heart broke. I know I would be. So uh, let's get over here in the water and get this thing soaking. It already stinks pretty good and it's gonna stink a lot more once it starts getting some water on it. All right, so we have it in the bucket again. I don't know how much longer, how long I'm gonna let it soak for, but I would, you know, if you're on a timeline, I would give it a few days or a week at a minimum. No less than a few days. It's gonna take a while for that water to penetrate all that dry skin and get it where you can loosen it up. Well guys, it's been just about a week, maybe a little over a week since I put that dead head few seconds for y'all, a little over a week for me, uh, since I put that dead head into a bucket of water. Today, all we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull it out, I'm gonna get the skin off of it, the hide off of it, get the bottom jaw removed, kinda get it as cleaned up as I possibly can, and it, I'm gonna probably put it back in some water and keep letting it soak. So I just wanna show y'all this step. If, uh, if you have a weak stomach, you know, this is gonna be the tough step for you. So this is it. Wish y'all could smell it. It's rough. So what I'm gonna do is, I've got this double bag trash can right here, or bag with trash in it. There's some stuff I'd put in there already when I ma I've macerated some skulls. I've been cleaning on them out here. There's one over there. Y'all see that in another video. So I'm just gonna bring it out here and put everything into that that I get off of it into that bucket right there. And then when I get done, I'll bag that up and uh, freeze it before I put it in my trash. I'm gonna turn the camera right here and show y'all how dried out these deer get. When they start to die and decay, that hide turns into leather like you've never seen. The blood dries into the skull and then that blood dries and, and penetrates that bone, it's very difficult to get back out. Okay, y'all. It's always worse on the forehead, but if you, I, I wish you could, I hope this camera's doing it justice. But this area right here, after this skull being soaked in water for seven or eight days is still dry as a bone. None of that water penetrated through the hide and made it into that part of the skull right there. That one right there is definitely worse than some I've seen, but that's why the, the way I do them is I soak them. For right now, I'm gonna go back out there, fill up a bucket of water, um, put the head in it, put it in the corner of my shop, and forget about it for another week or two, and then you'll see me then. We'll check in on it, and we'll see how it looks. 
Hey y'all, so it's been a little over 24 hours since I put this head in the bucket to continue to rehydrate it. And I came back in the shop, I was working on some other projects. I got some uh, stuff going on over here uh, I was working on tonight. And I just happened to look at it and I think it's completely rehydrated now. So let me show y'all. So you can see how white all that is. You know, yesterday you could tell on the video it was red and very, very tough. So that's good news. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna macerate that skull and I'll have it cleaned in about four or five days. I'm gonna put it in my maceration tank that I have. I'll show that to you here in a second. You don't have to go through the trouble of making a tank like I have, uh, even though it's not a whole lot of trouble. Um, I have another video on my channel where I macerate my son's dough that he shot. And all I did was put it in a five gallon bucket with a fish tank heater for a few weeks and rotted all the flesh off of it kind of dark out here so but all this is is a it's actually a deep freeze it has a heat lamp you can see the cord I have a heat lamp inside there let me open it and show y'all so you can tell I've got a couple other projects in here that I'm working on um, that heat lamp just keeps holds the heat inside of the or creates heat and then this freezer holds it inside of there and it pretty rapidly cleans the skulls so I'm gonna get that that deer and put it in here all right as you can tell got the head in my tank and we're gonna let it soak okay everybody well it's a uh, it's been a little ways down the road since uh, last time you saw me it's we're getting into springtime you can hear chicks in the background uh, as some of y'all probably know on this channel uh, we do a lot of homesteading and, and documenting that and we're raising baby chicks in the shop after that head had been in my um, maceration tank for about a week to a week and a half. I took it out, uh, pulled the head out, and made sure it was cleaned up real good. And um, it was. I'll roll it. I took a video of that. I'll roll that video right now. After that, I just put the head in a bucket of clean water. Typically, when I macerate heads, I don't change the water out ever because the bacteria in there is good. And that just, when you clean it out, in my opinion, it just kills the bacteria and slows the process down so um, but since it was completely done i just put it in some fresh water it's been sitting out in my little skull shed next to my shop here for several weeks now i, I can't even remember how long it's been since i've uh, uh started this video but you know those those heads can sit in water indefinitely i've never had one sitting there so long it caused a problem so so tonight um we're going to degrease that head and then we're going to widen it so most of the degreasing has been done on this head by just using the maceration process. It removes a ton of grease. In order to uh, just continue the degreasing a little bit more, we're gonna simmer this head in water and soap for an hour or two. Then we will go to the whitening process. My whitening process also removes a lot of grease as well, and I'll explain that when we get to that point. So we'll go out by the shop here and get that head going. All right, y'all, so this is a stock pot from Walmart. This size right here will hold one head. I have bigger ones that will hold two, but we're only doing one, so we got one for one. This soap right here is all I use. I've tried it all. Zote soap, OxyClean, Dawn. This is my favorite. We're gonna get that head right there. You can see the water's uh, still got some nastiness down in the bottom, but it's a lot cleaner than it, than it would have been in right after the maceration. So we're gonna get that head in this pot right here. I'm probably gonna put all that soap in there. You can see how full it is. And we'll bring it to a boil and then keep it at a simmer for about an hour or two. All right, so we got the skull in there, put the soap in there with it. We got the propane turned on full blast and we're gonna let it go until it comes up to a boil. And then when it does, I'm gonna turn it down to just below a boil somewhere around a simmer. All right guys, about ready to whiten this head. We left it in that bucket for about, an, I'd say close to two hours uh, at a simmer. Um, it's pretty much clean now. There's nothing left on it. One thing that we, that I do, um, I, have a, I keep a spray ball in my shop. That right there is about half ammonia. And did you just spray it on me? No, it didn't. <laughs> um, it's about half ammonia and half fabuloso. You can put half ammonia and half pine saw, half ammonia, half... Any, any kind of cleaner like that will work. But what we do with it is, on, those horns are gonna stink. 
on that head. Ethan's this showing you. This is the stuff we use right here. Yeah. That's what is part of in this bottle. So, if as as we know, we recommend this. That's what we use to uh. Ah, it's going. Um, yeah. Everything's falling. This is what we recommend right here. Yes. I sprayed on those horns several times throughout the process. The first time I take it out and it's done macerating, I'll spray the horns down, and then I have a bunch of different scrub brushes. Just scrub the horns down and then rinse them off. A lot of times I'll power wash these heads to get anything out of them. This one doesn't need that. We we hit we'll hit it with the the jet on the on the water hose, mm -hmm. and that'll get anything out. Just make sure you spray in the nose real good, uh, spraying the brain cavity real good, all the little you know nooks and crannies, and that'll be good. So Ethan's gonna spray it down and show y'all uh, how we do it. Ethan's just gonna rinse it off the water hose. We, we've already scrubbed it down with the brush a little bit, so we're not gonna do that. So just hit it with the jet. I always put it on the jet right yeah. there. Just, and then just spray everything off real good. And make sure you're being really careful around here. That's like paper. Yes. Um, it will break easily. Yep, you, you've been paying attention. All right, get the horns real good. All right, y'all. I whiten with liquid uh, hair developer. I've tried the stuff at the pool store. A lot of people use it. I don't like it. I'm gonna make a video on that. And I'll explain to you why I don't like it on another video. This is what I use. You can get the 40 volume. It's a little bit more expensive. It's hard to get in our area, but the 20 volume is easy to get. So, and that is more than enough. I put it in the pot straight. With, if I need to put a little water in there to add, you know, like to top off the pot, I will. But that's it. You gotta wrap the bases of the antlers before you put the head in there. I'm about to do that and I'll show you what it looks like once I get done. I got the bases of the horns wrapped, plastic wrap, and electrical tape. All right, y'all, we're gonna put it in the peroxide. We're gonna bring that peroxide up to a boil. We're gonna leave it in there. Once it hits a boil, we're gonna kill the heat. We're gonna leave it in there about 10 to 20 minutes. On a head like this, it's a little bit darker because it was a dead head. It needs a little bit more time. That peroxide does pull grease and fat out of this head. Any, any leftover fat and grease in this head, it's gonna pull it all out of there. And it will whiten it as well. I don't know if y'all can hear me, it's kinda loud out here. That head is, a the peroxide's about to start boiling. I will be getting it off here in a minute. Um, it's been, it's kinda windy out here, it's just taking longer than normal. Once it comes to a boil and I kill it, I'm gonna leave it in there for probably about 10 to 20 minutes. I'm gonna keep checking it occasionally and see how it looks. I'll pull it out of there now. It's probably a little wide. I haven't looked at it yet, but it's probably a little, uh, significantly wider than it was when we started, but it's probably still got a ways to go. Got the shrink wrap and the tape cut off. I sprayed my solution on there again of uh, ammonia and fabuloso scrub the horns down again hopefully that'll be all i needed to do but if it's y'all you know, do the sniff test on them tomorrow and see how they're uh how they're looking and if i need to do more i'll, I'll scrub more and wash it again this head to most people is probably clean white enough it does have a little bit of a yellow hue to it and it's got some dark spots. I don't know if you can see them on the camera, kind of right here and right here. That that may come out when it dries. Um, it's likely it'll come out when it dries. If it doesn't, I'll go to plan B. But for now, I'm gonna put this thing under a fan here in the shop and let it dry for a day or two and then come back to it and see how it looks. Um, ideally, it's supposed to rain all night, tonight and tomorrow. Ideally, I'd like to put out in the sunlight. Sunlight will make it pop and turn white much, much better. I think we're supposed to get sunlight over the weekend, so I may just leave in the shop until, uh, today's Thursday, leave it in the shop till, till maybe Saturday or Sunday and then put it out. We're just gonna uh, do that for now and come back to it and see where we're at. We'll go from there. Okay guys, we are done with this head except we need to touch up the antlers or the horns. For people that don't like to have them called horns, horns. This is what I use to pretty much touch up any heads that I work on. This is a Minwax uh, stain marker and the color's provincial. I pretty much across the board use this color. And on this head, see right here at the base, 
like right there where it's it's white. These horns, you know, the antlers in general may have faded, you know, with it sitting outside. But I don't know what they look like before, so I'm gonna just leave them the way they are, as, you know, as far as the entire antlers, and just touch up those little spots uh, so those can't be seen. So all I do is, let me go, there it is. So that spot right there, let's see. Right there, you hear my son in the background calling my wife. Just go like this. Like that. Take a paper towel and just kind of fade it. Just like that. All right, guys, got the head all finished up. I had to come out here behind the shop. Our uh, chicks are being super loud. My wife's here mocking me. Uh, our chicks in the shop are being super loud. You can hear them, I can hear them still from out here. My, by far, my favorite method to do on a deadhead is to macerate them. Soaking them in that, um, in that water for so long draws the blood out, um, it helps degrease them, and it, it's just, it's the best way to do it. Then, second that with um, whitening them in the heated liquid, liquid peroxide, that also, um, in my opinion, does the final step of degreasing and pulls out any extra remaining grease in there. And this head, in my opinion, is gonna be white for years to come. Guys, if this video helped y'all, do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you get notified when we put out other videos. And uh, hit that thumbs up button. It just helps our videos get seen. You doing that, you know, we, we do most of this content I do on here is, is um, it costs me money to make these videos. By the time I pay for uh, camera gear and laptops and, and all that other stuff. Um, so you doing that just throws me a little bit my way to help me out and we would greatly appreciate it we also do a lot of homesteading and other things like that on our video if you like that uh, stick around we hunt we fish our garden our animals all that kind of stuff so um and i also have a lot of older taxidermy videos i have a playlist with all of them if you'd like to see those uh tons of good information there and a lot more to come so hope this video helps y'all thank y'all very much and we'll see y'all again